All right, welcome back. And today's the moment that I've been waiting for. I don't know if you guys have been waiting for. If you watched part one of the video, got on the Facebook Marketplace, found the Ryzen 9 5900X. These things are out of stock. They're sold out everywhere. And the guy was selling it for 600 or 650. I talked him down to 580, so I picked it up for 580, which is typically the cost for it for shipping and tax. So 580 is pretty much what I would have paid if I would have gotten it on Newegg or Amazon. So I put the black tape over here so nobody can see my serial numbers. Don't want to give that up over here. So it has sealed and it hasn't been opened yet. So I'm going to open it up. Quite satisfying. And here we go. Pop open our CPU. It's actually kind of anticlimactic because... It's just pretty much this holding it in place, but it's okay. And here's our CPU, Ryzen 9 5900X. Cool, very excited about it. So um, I'm not gonna get into the details of exactly the motherboard and all that stuff, but just pretty much we're gonna do a MSI B550M motor Wi-Fi motherboard. I'm gonna do a separate video of um, unboxing and why I went this route. And yeah, we're gonna talk about this in a separate video, but this is just to turn it on. All right. And then um, I'm just gonna use this four gig stick of G-Skill Rip Jaws. I think this is like DDR4 2133. It's fine, it's just to turn it on. We're not gonna go gaming or hog wild with it. So that's just the purpose of that. So let's get this thing on. Let's set it up on our makeshift test bench, if we would. All right. Oh, it's pretty nice. I'm looking forward to doing a review on it. And for our CPU cooler, we're just gonna use this. And so let's just pop this in. We're gonna do this in channel one, just to kind of get that moving. Just four gigs. Uh, we are gonna have to unscrew the mounts so we could get that in. So let's do that real quick. All right. We're not gonna put thermal paste because like I said, we're just booting this into the BIOS. Just make sure we got a screen in a post and we'll do more thorough testing later. So let's just mount this on. All right, let's get that plugged in. All right, let's take our little USB thumb drive. Let's pop that in the back. You guys won't get to see that. Now this doesn't have an onboard, uh, uh, onboard graphics. So we're gonna have to actually just use a graphics card. I'm just gonna pop in my RX 560 just because I have it lying around and it'll be fine. So let's pop you in. Okay, power supply, which just give you, see what I'm gonna do, it's a 500 watt power supply. All we're doing is turning this on. Like get you plugged in right over here. All right. For, there we go, CPU. Uh, GPU, which should be one of these. I think these should come apart. Yep, that works. Let's just power it up. Ooh. Okay. All right, so for our power, we we'll use this little thing over here. You get this on Amazon for like, I think $10. And it's really cool because you can use your power button. Or you could just short out the pins, which is fine and dandy. Everybody does that, but I like to do this. This works out fine. Plug it in right over here. I'm not worried about the R, the colors or anything like that. And of course, my display adapter is totally different from this. So, all right. Be right back. All right, quick change of plans. GT710, Old Faithful, has a display port, I think, I'm pretty sure. No, it does not, but it's okay. I have an adapter for that, and I didn't have an adapter for the other one. The other one only has a DVI, and this one is display, so this one is HDMI, but I do have an adapter for that. Let's go find it. Okay, we're back. Let's try this again. So 
Of course, this monitor is only DVI and VGA, and of course, I have display ports and HDMIs, so yeah. Um, I need to get a new monitor for this setup for my testing, so if any of you guys want to give me a monitor, reach out to me, dlntechgarage at gmail.com. Uh, I'd love to take a donation to have a monitor for this, so just for you for thought. All right, and if you're watching the video, you would have noticed, for you astute viewers, I forgot to put the CPU in. Yeah, it's pretty embarrassing. I put the heatsink in and forgot to put the CPU in, so yeah. Now let's take a look at the CPU. Look how nice it is, our Ryzen 9 5900X. And let's take it out carefully. Let's pop it in very carefully. Let's see, make sure I get it the right way. Do, 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 there we go. Should go this way. There we go, sitting down, no resistance. Boom, our CPU is in. I haven't done a Ryzen CPU in a long time. Well, I haven't had an AMD build in a long time. I've built them. I mean, we did do the Ryzen 2600, and I think we did a 2400G on this channel. No, we didn't, so. It's been a while since I've dealt with the AMD, so. I'm used to Intel not having the pins and it's a little simpler, but it's okay. We have AMD and we're happy. All right, that took longer than expected. So let's take our power supply. Let's plug this in. All right, flick it on. All right, here goes nothing. All right, she's powering on. And let's see. All right, so we're back. So after some trial and error, some research, getting online and doing some finagling and learning something new that I just didn't know and haven't done before, we got this figured out and we should have gotten this working. So let's go ahead and power it on. Fans are turning on. And here's the moment of truth. Wait for it. Wait for it. We got a green light. Monitor's coming on. And here we go. We're booted up and we're in our BIOS. CPU speed, 3.7. Our memory's 2133 because I'm just using that memory stick I had there. Um, let's see, where is it at? Where is it at? There we go. Ryzen 9 5900X. So our marketplace Ryzen 9 5900X that I got for $580 works and definitely happy with it. Now we still got some more testing to do and stress testing, but at this point I'm pretty confident that everything's working as it should, so we should be fine and we should be good to go. So let's talk about this real quick. First off, had to flash the BIOS. That was the key thing. Definitely have to flash the BIOS. So if you have these B550, X570 motherboards, you're gonna have to flash the BIOS, obviously, so it could support it. Went to MSI's website, downloaded it. It was easy and it wasn't easy. And let's talk about that real quick. So it was easy in the sense that we just had to put it on a USB thumb drive, pop it in. I don't know if we get that in right over here, but we pop it in the bottom USB port. And there's a little button over here that's kind of indented the fl uh, flash BIOS button. And by doing it that way, I was able to get the BIOS flashed and this thing was able to run. There is a little trick to doing it and we're actually gonna do a separate video, so stay tuned for that. And in that video, I'm actually gonna take you through a walkthrough on how to properly flash it without using a CPU, without using anything, and just using the BIOS flash feature on the motherboard. So it's pretty easy, it's very simple, but there is one little thing that you have to do in order for this to work properly. So definitely stay tuned for that video and we'll definitely go over it. My final thoughts, buying a almost $600 CPU on the Facebook marketplace, unknown, sight unseen, unable to test it a week later, was it worth it? Yes. Was it sketchy? A little bit. And was it a little nerve wracking? Yes. There was still that chance in the back of my mind that, hey, maybe this didn't work and maybe this was, I don't know. I don't know, so many theories to talk about, but it does work. I'm definitely happy with it. Definitely glad it works. So that's where we're at. And 
yeah, we'll keep going for here. So thanks for watching. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts, what you think, suggestions, concerns, questions, comments, all that good stuff. Uh, hit the like button if you like the video. Subscribe for more. And like always, we'll see what we come up with next.